Hello, welcome to this video on timing diagrams in IBM Rational Rhapsody. Timing diagrams are UML diagram. They were first added in UML2 in 2005. Uh, UML diagram is a UML They were first added in UML2 in 2005, which is a major revision of the unified modeling language. They're actually a type of interaction diagram. So they're very similar to sequence diagrams, and we'll see this in a bit. So the version here we've got is Rhapsody 8.4. Uh, time diagrams are actually added in 8.05. So to create a timing diagram, we need to right click on a package and choose Add New Diagrams Timing Diagram. And then you'll see here we've got a choice between either compact or elaborated. So these two forms follow from the specification. The elaborated timing diagram option was added in 8.05. So timing diagrams are a bit like sequence diagrams, except they go from left to right rather than top to bottom. And on the diagram, we will have a lifeline that represents a classifier, typically a class, but it could be a block in SystemL or an object, which has an implicit class um, in Rhapsody or an actor or a use case. So uh, it's much easier to just drag them on from the browser if we've already got these classes. So I'll delete this one uh, and then I'll add a system border. So this is, um, this could be an actor. The system border kind of acts as a, um, a collector of all types of actors. So notice here on the timing diagram, unlike a sequence diagram, I can't just draw an event from the boundary to a class. Um, I first need to put a state invariant or a condition onto the lifeline. And the condition states, well, what is the state of this classifier? at a particular point in time. And uh, where the crosses of those two condition markers meet is um, a point of change. And you say, well, that change occurred because of an event was received. Um, if I have an existing event, um, I can right click and then select that. So um, from the right click menu, choose select message. In this case, we're showing the tap being turned on basically. Um, the condition marker or the state invariant can, can have just pure text or we could bind it to a, a model element like a state. So if we have an existing state machine, we could just pick the state uh, and bind it to that. And then if the state chart changes, the state invariant here would be updated. Um, there's various types of annotation. Uh, the timeout here, for example, says and on receiving the turn on event, create a timer. Um, and this is milliseconds, Rhapsody notation. So select a timer for 10 seconds um, and that causes it to turn off. Obviously, we can put any other type of common tool onto the diagram as well, such as requirements. And we could show traceability using kind of standard SysML approaches like stereotype dependencies. Um, the time axis is effectively determined from some settings. Um, on the general tab of the diagram, you can set the unit label, the start value and the increment value, um, and you can update this. Uh, these are actually persisted as properties on the diagram. And uh, the diagram has a set of properties or default display options that can also be set through properties. Um, this is a co compact timing diagram. Um, and we can choose the default that Rhapsody creates a diagram with uh, by setting properties. So let's just do that now. So I'll set a property at the model level, which will change the default so that uh, the selected default would be elaborated rather than compact. This is an example of how you can set up a model with properties to change the behavior of Rhapsody. Um, so now let's create a elaborated timing diagram. Of course, we can just choose this um, radio button to change the type of diagram we want. So an elaborated 
timing diagram provides more detail on the classifier. So if we drag it on, you can see there's actually a set of invariant markers as lines on this classifier. Um, and we could um, effectively set these to states. And you'll see when, when I do this. So let's put the stop one, top one as the off state and the bottom one as the on state. And then once I've done that, I can put a, a time segment onto the diagram. And the time segment allows us to define kind of that a condition exists for a particular period of time. And we can see the transition between those two states. So this works quite well if you have an enumerated value, um, or in this case, this, the states of the, um, the tap. And that state change again could be caused by an event or a message, in this case, turning on the tap. Or actually turning on, yes, turn on the tap. So we can select that event because it already exists. So there's a set of tools on the timing diagram that come from the UML specification. So we can annotate this with uh, either duration constraints, duration observations, or time constraints and time observations. Let's put a duration observation here and say, well, actually, between this turning on and turning off, there's actually, we observed it, or we set an observation to say it's a particular amount of time five seconds. So that's quite easy to do. Um, you can actually say that a the classifier kind of destructed or the, the an object of the, that type was destroyed at this particular point in time. Um, or we could just annotate to say, well, you know, at this particular point in time, this was the time observation. Essentially, it's a time ordered sequence from left to right, and it provides us with a way of showing how states or enumerated values or attributes change over time. Uh, if we go and look at the UML 2.5.1 specification here, um, you can see kind of what the standard notation is, and you can see that RAPST is following the same concepts as the standard notation. And in particular, it has both the compact form for timing diagrams, as well as the elaborated form. My name is Fraser Chapman. If you do have any questions or want to talk to me about Rhapsody, then this is my email address. Thank you very much.